Number seven then for five marks, it's the double angle equation. It's the one with the cos. That's the one that gives you more marks because that's the one that gives you a quadratic. Well, you have to change that into a single angle and the cos has got three forms. So you need to make it match this one. So I'll leave that alone. So sine x, putting the wee degree sign in, it'll be good there. In degrees, so that's nice and friendly. You like your degrees. Equals three times. Now the one, this will change into be the one that mentions sine, which is one minus two sine squared of x. Now it's just a case of take everything over to one side. So you've got minus six will go across as six for the sine squared term. It's only one mention of sine x. Two, take away three minus one. So there's the quadratic. Now you just factorize that like any quadratic. There's only a one in the middle, so it must be the three and the two. So three sine x and times two sine x will give that. Must be a one times a one for that. And then we're going to have the plus three, but minus the one to make a plus in the middle. Oops, just said that. Right, that gives you two answers. So if this bracket is zero, it means that the sine of x must be a third. And if this bracket is zero, it means the sine of x must be negative a half. Now that's a case for a calculator, but you know this one. That's a 30 degrees somewhere. Where is the sine negative? All sine tan cos. It's negative down here. So that's where you're going to put your 30s. It'll be 30 more than that, or 30 less than the 360. So that means that x is going to be, now taking away the wee degree sign, I don't think they'll bother if you leave it in though. That means x is going to be either 180 plus the 30 or 360 minus the 30 that gives the half. So the two answers here are 210 and 330. So that bit was okay. This one, I don't really know. So I'll just have to use my calculator. Inverse sine of a third and then, I'll just think back in that diagram, get the little acute angle first of all. So inverse sine of a third, which gives you 19.47. Now since it's positive, that will be one of the answers. So I suppose I could just go straight in with that. So you've got 19.47 and so on. And the other answer will be 180 minus that. So I've got that, or I've got 180 minus 19.47 and so on. So it depends how many figures you want. We'll just go to a decimal place. So 19.5, and then taking that away would give you 160.5. Now, better put them into numerical order. They already are numerical order. I'll just do it again anyway. So 19.5 would work. 160.5 would work if you put it into this. 210 would work, and 330 would work. So number eight for five marks, area between two curves. This diagram shows this cubic here, there's its equation there, being intersected by a line, there's its equation there, and you have to find the area contained, or the first portion of the area contained between them, because there'll be another bit over here. But you're looking for this part, and it tells you the points of intersections, you don't need to work them out. It gives you the relevant ones, the x-coordinates. Calculate this area here. Well, it's just an area. Yeah, but the area, where do I start? When x is negative 2, where do you finish? When x is 1. What's the equation of the top? So what are the top y coordinates? x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. From that takeaway, what are the lower ones? x minus 5. Don't forget to put it in that bracket to stop that 5 escaping its subtraction or multiplied by dx. That you could leave it like that, it would, it would work and integrate all those bits, but you can just tidy it up. So that will be, there's nothing to affect the x cubed or the x squared terms, because we've only got these two to take away. So that'll be minus another one there, but minus 5, but plus 5 will make that plus 6 dx. Now it's just add 1 to the power, divide by the power. The nasty bit's still to come though. So up to 4. Divide by 4, now you've got quarters in it. So this is the part to be evaluated. 
up to three, but there's no threes. So now we've got thirds in it. Up to two, divide by two, but there's no twos there. So now we've got halves in it, plus six x. So this is going to be a wee bit of a pest to type in with all of those fractions. So that needs to get evaluated. So first of all, you evaluate it at one, which just makes all these x's disappear effectively. You could just put down a quarter minus two thirds, etc. But I'll put it in. Minus two thirds of one cubed minus five upon two of one squared plus six times one. And then do it all again. And this is this will be the nasty bit. A quarter of negative two to the four. Two thirds of negative two cubed. Loads of writing. It's not any more difficult because there's loads of writing. It's just annoying. It's just cumbersome. Uh, negative two squared plus six times negative two. Now, you can press all that in one go and get to the answer, or you could put them in, in two parts, you know, do this, and then you can reuse your calculation just changing some numbers. So doing that one first gives you a 37 upon 12. Then take away whatever this is. So I'll go back and I'll put in all these twos. So putting them in gives me a negative 38 upon 3. And I'll just carry that subtraction. So just using the answer, it gives me 63 upon 4 units squared. Unless you wanted to put 15 and 3 quarters, but that would do.